Hey guys, welcome back. This is uh, Chris, your host with Shadows Techland. So I wanted to go over uh, wikis and why I think they're a good idea and why you should use them. So I've been doing home labbing for quite a few years now. Messed around with quite a bit of software. Uh, it gets kind of nutty when it comes to trying to uh, document installs. Um, software, uh, IP addresses, ports, uh, things can get a little nutty after a while to try and keep track of everything, install guides, uh, basically writing documentation so if anything ever happens to you or you have to rebuild again you have notes that way everything's properly documented in case of any um, God forbid uh, circum life circumstances, job circumstances, um, basically everything in between it definitely can get quite a bit difficult to uh, keep track of everything, basically, is what I'm trying to say. Now, obviously, there's a lot of different methods that people can use. I mean, I used to use Notepad. Kept a lot of uh, text documents inside of a folder. Of course, you, you know, you forget about them, you don't update them, things can get kind of uh, convoluted after a while, especially. If you ever have to revisit things or reinstall things, sometimes you don't have everything properly documented. Obviously, you can use text documents, um, notepads themselves, um, OneNote. There's a lot of different ways you can do it. Personally, I think wikis are a godsend, and without them, uh, definitely just it makes life easier. Now, obviously, there's 20,000 different wiki software you can use, not saying one's better than the other. Personally, myself, I found it an easier to install using what's called Bookstack. And uh, I went with that one. There's MediaWiki, there's, you know, lots of other different ones. Not saying one's better than the other, not taking credit for the software itself, just what I decided to use. Now, Bookstack, uh, I like it a lot. I've used it probably for two or three years now and my documentation has gotten better which will obviously help me for um, jobs since I'm trying to get away from desktop support and get it more into server administration obviously there's a lot more documentation and things you'll have to do so it's going to help for personal life for home labbing personal and also for um, jobs so that's kind of where, I, where I'm at at this point now with Bookstack there's quite a few different ways that you can uh, install it um, you can do manual, which obviously, if that's what you like to do, more power to you. I didn't have the time to do manual because uh, it's a pain in the ass. Try doing it. Obviously, uh, depends on your level of Linux expertise. Some people, that's their thing, and more power to you. Now, you can do manual. You can do Docker installs. Uh, there's also shared hosting. And then, of course, uh, the installation that is needed. If you decided to go the Linux route and not a Docker, is uh, they do prefer Ubuntu. That's basically what's been validated and tested. So there's a couple different ways that you can do it. If you decided to go um, manual, like I said, more power to you, just a lot more coding. I didn't go that route just because I'm not as familiar with Linux as I would need to be in order to take care of that, so I didn't go that route. Now, at the time of this video, um, it looks like that they are supporting in Ubuntu for a, there's installation scripts that can be used which basically automate everything well most things for you not everything but almost all of it and that is for Ubuntu 16, 18, and 20. Uh, I believe if I'm not mistaken I did mine on 18.04 I actually have mine in a Ubuntu 18.04 um, virtual machine on my Unraid server and that was basically when I was using Hyper-V so I kind of cheated when I moved to, migrated over to Unraid. I just used Starwinds um, VM converter, converted it over, and then just imported it in. So I didn't have to spend a long time going through and setting it up again. Now, if a couple things to keep in mind, there are some requirements. Now, these uh, automated installers, if you do decide to go that route, uh, one of the stipulations is that it needs to be done on a fresh host. You do not want to do this on an Ubuntu host that already has databases and things set up because you will possibly be overwriting them and can cause problems. 
Now, at the time of uh, this installation and this video, the requirements are PHP version 7.2, and then of course there will be some extensions that are required, so OpenSSL, and then uh, MySQL, and a couple other things. Uh, MySQL is 5.6, just a single database, all permissions, uh, managed schema, so basics. They do recommend Git version control, that way there is more automation when it comes to version updates, making things a lot easier. I'm not saying you have to go that route, but that's where it is. So if you were to do go the Ubuntu route, uh, depending on if you're using 16, 18, or 20, there will be a couple scripts. Obviously, you will need to do this as CEDOSU root permission, so you need to make sure you have the correct permissions in order to even go further into this. And then you'll be doing the wkit command and, and basically installing it. Well, you'll download it, and then you'll make it executable, and then you'll run the installation script, and it will go through, and there will be some user input that is needed and or during the automation process for the installation, so like the database name, things of that nature. Now, I'm not going to go through and run through and do the install for you due to the fact that I already have mine set up. I will briefly go over mine and what it looks like. Obviously, I'm not going to go too far into it because of privacy and security of uh, my information, but I will definitely um, open that up and we can take a look. So, one sec here. So basically, you'll be brought to, um, obviously I've named mine at this point in time. Now, I am trying to get um, downloads, uh, basically like a little landing page for all my installers I'm kind of working on. I need to go back into that and uh, take a look at that and get that set up further. So you basically, you can set up what's called shelves, like it is the, you know, a shelf on your bookcase to where books would install to. And it's kind of like the same uh, concept, essentially. So you create a shelf, and then inside of the shelf, you create, uh, you can do like shelves, which are like sections. So if you want like one section for server stuff, one section for personal, one section for recipes, Etc. You basically set it up how it is that it ever, you know, that it works for you. And you know, I'll kind of show um, a few things here. Now that's old. I actually need to remove that because I don't have those servers anymore. But as an example, um, I need to remove that as well. That's old. So I have my hardware specs because uh, it's hard to remember everything, what motherboards I'm using, etc. Uh, health checklist, which it looks like I've moved. Uh, my network layout, so basically my IP addresses and my ports for my various services and servers. Uh, Pi-hole just so that way I'm lazy and don't have to go and search for all the uh, the automated installer again. More network information, uh, notes to myself, so various installers, things that I've run into that uh, I wanted to keep memory of. Basically memory dumps written down back backup strategy for everything. I have my licenses for various softwares that are in here. So FileBot. Um, I did some documentation when it comes to um, when I was building out and specking my rack to get everything taken care of. Basically everything in between that you can think of that you may need. Desk specs, uh, what's set up at my desk, 
network layouts, lab notes, backup codes. Basically, it's just a dump of everything that you could possibly think of that you may need access to in one location, really super duper easy and convenient to make. Basically, you just organize it and set it up exactly how it is that you are interested in. So you can set up you know, your lab information, recipes, um, kids' information that may be needed, um, personal information, um, recipes, um, to-do lists, basically whatever you need to basically organize yourself and to keep everything. I mean, I have everything from you know, employer addresses, um, references, um, network layouts, VM layouts, IP addresses, ports, what's connected to my switches so I don't have to remember everything even though there's labels on there. Basically everything you could possibly think of and it's really super helpful to me. The only thing that you have to um, basically remember is if things you do drastic changes to basically update your documentation. The better your documentation is, God forbid if something happens where you have to do a rebuild or a teardown or you move or you know server blows up, God forbid, you have documentation on exactly how to get back to where you are at this point in time. I have back you I have thorough documentation of how I built everything. Uh, what ports I use for everything, that way I can basically, it, God forbid, if one of my servers or something happens dramatically bad, I can immediately recover based off of the backup strategies which I have, which I do have um, links in the description on uh, proper backup strategies, so there I have a video I've done of that. And uh, basically, you know, just a really quick brief overview, I wanted to share what I use. Obviously, like I said previously, um, one wiki doesn't fit everyone. It's basically whatever meets your needs, and this has worked wonderfully for me. I will leave a link in the description of uh, the software, and that way you can check it out for yourself. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out, and I will see you guys on the other side. Have a good day, and make sure to like and subscribe.